So a while back I saw uh, online someone uh, had in Japan actually had put together a uh, uh, block of aluminum that would melt ice uh, into a spherical shape. I thought it was really cool. Saw the video, went up to the website, saw the price, saw that it was, you know, right around a thousand dollars, maybe a little more for it, and uh, thought that while it was cool, it wasn't a thousand dollars cool. So uh, I decided to make one myself. Didn't really have a lot of metalworking experience, um, but you know, had uh, uh, had access to a metal lathe or had a metal lathe. So I decided I'd. Uh, Watch some videos, learn some stuff, uh, and, and then uh, set about to make it. So, four-inch aluminum round with a uh, hemisphere cut on each side. Uh, some vent holes so as it's melting, the uh, excess water and air will leave. Underneath, there's uh, one central hole. Uh, half inch diameter that leads up to that smaller vent hole and uh, uh, a cross hole that's uh, half inch diameter as well with a uh, smaller intersecting hole right here. The uh, smaller intersecting hole actually has a set screw in it with a uh, piece of uh, small piece of plastic that's riding on a ridge that was cut uh, or groove rather that was cut into this bolt. Um, this knob here is actually a half inch uh, stainless steel bolt that I uh, cut the head off of, faced the front of to make it look nice, and then uh, added a couple of uh, uh, drill details here to indicate the position of the cam that's on the inside. So mounted uh, or uh, rather made the uh, central pin offset so depending on position so here it's uh, it's all the way down if I turn it uh, 180 degrees it actually lifts the uh, pin that's riding in there there's a small piece of uh, the same stainless steel bolt actually that I cut off machine down so it fit up through the hole and it's now just a uh, half inch on the back side and uh, probably about an eighth of an inch on the top and that just rides floats up and down it's loose in there um, but rides on top of that uh, that offset so I can actually lift the ice ball out I don't know if you can see it moving or not but um, just a little detail and then uh, faced off a flat spot here mainly so it'd be easier to drill but uh, have these two stainless steel pins um, used uh, transfer punches to uh, get everything lined up but did a nice job. The toughest thing about this was uh, was really cutting the internal recess and I'll uh, uh, here's a tool that I used to do that. So I had to do a little bit of puzzling to figure out how to cut a uh, two and a quarter inch internal recess but be able to get the center line of that sphere right on the plane where the two halves intersect. So what I did was took this 5 8 inch piece of uh, bar stock, uh, drilled a 5 8 inch hole in it all the way through. You can't see it here because of the grinding but uh, ran a uh, roll pin through there to hold the uh, that bolt in place and then took a piece of uh, inch and three quarter round stock that was a piece of scrap drilled a 5 8 inch hole through the drilled top hole of it. for a machine tool bit and uh, uh, also for a set screw to hold it in place so I'd get some amount of adjustability. So that just rides right here on this. I used a couple of uh, pieces of shim to hold it steadier so it wouldn't vibrate and then a uh, uh, drilled a hole off at about the 7 o'clock position, 8 o'clock position so I could get 90 degrees of swing without interfering with my workpiece. So that way I could get it in right up to the center line from that uh, the axis of rotation there. I can get it right up to the center line without it bumping the workpiece and it'll cut that uh, two and a quarter inch uh, radius that I need. And then uh, I just uh, clamp this bar in the uh, quick change tool post 
and then as I advance it I can swing it 90 degrees in and out so I can uh, advance it, swing I've it in. Had one design element to change. I was using a box end wrench to grab onto this uh, this bolt that I'd put in here and I put it in here so I could get clearance from the workpiece. Ultimately though, the problem was grabbing on with a box end wrench as I would swing it in I'd get to the center where that vent hole was and there was just enough play on this nut that it would actually, uh, or the top of the bolt, that it would actually uh, let loose and it bounce just a little bit in that hole and vibrate. Not the end of the world, but if I had to do it over again, I'd uh, just put in a piece of shaft here with a 90 degree bend on it that I could run and then I wouldn't have that play from the, uh, the wrench on the top side. So uh, let's take a look at the tool as it cut in action. I was taking off about uh, 50 thou per pass. So let's see this thing in action. So I've got this really fancy ice mold here that I can use to make ice cubes that are big enough for this thing. Had it running under just a little bit of warm water because it makes everything faster. Throw that top on there. If you get too big of an ice chunk in there, it just seems to take uh, quite a while to melt. Um, so the uh, thermal capacity of the uh, aluminum has its limits. like we got hung up there for a second. Might have to uh, expand the openings just a little bit. There we go. 